Um, I thought it was uh, good. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to get better, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm trying to you know, kind of gauge myself off of Reddick and things that he does you know, so differently, and it's kind of a style change that I'm trying to convert myself to do 18 years later. Is that um, something that you had an inkling when he came over to Toyota that he would bring some different things, or have you been surprised to be looking at his style like, oh, wow, he has a different approach? Yeah, he has a different approach for sure. And, and you know, my similar this week, I just kind of sat in on a session and watched him and then tried to emulate it, you know. And I did, I was just a few seconds off. Is there a preferred lane on the choose here? Uh, I, I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. Um, you know, that it's interesting. I I know there was just a couple of people on social media that wanted to choose, but I, I don't know why we have it here. It's just, it doesn't make much sense. And um, I think we just kind of got pressured into it. Yeah, at least consi kind of consistent rules across for all yeah, races kind of helps, doesn't it, or not? It tracks different, right? But I mean, the difference is the main spotters can't see it uh, and it's hard to see on the racetrack. But, um, we'll, we'll adapt. We'll be fine. Kind of an obvious question, but not having the stops for the stages. How do you expect that to play out? Is that something you like in a room? Um, again, I think we got pressured into this one. Um, I don't know. I think this thing has potential to really get strung out, like, a lot. And so, it's, you know, if we do, then don't want to hear any complaining about these things being uh, strung way out. And, and, you know, because it's, that's the potential. You know, we had stages, um, certainly road courses. You know, this will make for more uh, strategy. But if you're 10 seconds behind the car in front of you and 10 seconds behind you, strategy is not going to matter a ton. Does not having stage breaks any change anything for you as the driver as far as how you approach the race, how you push, trying to figure out when to push, when not to push? And that type yeah, of thing? it will. I mean, certainly preparation. I. I said to myself coming in after practice that like better stay hydrated on this one it's it's going to be um definitely tough physically if it stays green Cindric said it's also just a physically challenging racetrack agree yeah it definitely is for sure it's, you know very technical it's got some technical parts it's got some long straightaways that you, know, you got to hit your marks everywhere on this racetrack or else time really can compound so uh, agree with that but if everybody's slipping and sliding and it's a technical racetrack shouldn't there be cautions uh, not really, because everyone's going to, I mean, I, I think you'll probably see a little bit quicker trigger to full course cautions, to be honest with you. That's that's really the only thing that will be different. You've alluded to it, but what are your personal preferences on having no stages at the road courses, or any track to do? Um, yeah, no, I, I don't think so. We, we, we improved the sport when we got stages. Um, it was well thought out. Um, the, the point system that goes with it, all that is, is, is good. and. You know, we did this for, to help TV, and, and obviously you need to have somewhat of a break. Um, again, if you don't like some races that, you know, if you don't like the old Atlanta, you won't like no stage racing at all tracks because it can really get strung out like that if you uh, if you let it. Hey, Danny, on, on different, do you know when your appeal is? Hmm? Do you know when your appeal is? Uh, April 6th. Is that good? I mean, is that there's been a lot of chatter on social media like, why can't it just be the following week? But I mean, does it matter? I've been available. Uh, they have to plan and travel for themselves and for uh, you know, whoever the panel is. So, you know, again, I, it, you, you just never know with their one schedule. Do you have a strategy on how you're going to lay out your mm -hmm. defense? Yep. We talked on the podcast this week about the lack of respect with echoing what Kyle had said, and then you'd also talk about black flags at the clash, and you talked about what happened with Brexit. So, you then also said you don't want to have NASCAR getting in strikes and balls called. So, what is the solution to the lack of respect if the younger drivers aren't listening to you guys and NASCAR, you don't want NASCAR to step in? Well, they, they said they don't want to step in. And that had, that's as far as drivers wrecking each other. They said they, they don't want to step in. It's a self-policing sport. But, you know, obviously, you know, when it comes to marginal cause, yeah, it, it appears we don't want them to be involved. But when someone gets sent? Uh, yeah, they, they, I think they do. I think they need to say that, you know, when they see something that they deem intentional, then absolutely, uh, send, send someone to the back. Uh, but you don't want to also temper the racing that the sport was born on, right? You don't want to have people 
being afraid to get into each other because that's what the sport was built on, right? This is a contact sport. It has been for a long time. Do you, are you happy with doing the podcast still, or have you had any moments where you're just like, why did you do something like this? No, no, not at all. I mean, it's, um, you know, I think for me, it's a it's a good transition. It's, it's a way for me to kind of, uh, you know, talk about the sport and help grow the sport. Uh, that's what I, you know, set into this t to do. Um, and, you know, whether one's opinion of it, they don't like it, it's still growing our sport whether they like it or not. Is it a sense of therapy for you? Yeah. Wake up. You're just like being yeah. Able to yeah, no, it's good. I think it's, uh, you know, listen, I'm, I'm doing everything I love. I'm driving race cars, I'm talking about the sport, and I'm running the team. So, you know, I'm, I'm giving back to the sport in, in a lot of different ways. Um, it's because I, I have an interest in it, and, it, and it, I'm still having fun doing everything I'm doing. You know, I never, if, if, if I woke up one day and I said, you know, this podcast is a burden on me, and I don't, uh, I just don't feel like doing it. Dale Jr. said you're going to have days where you just don't feel like doing it. It's not there for me. Like I, I, I do love staying busy. You know, if I find two hours in the afternoon where I could be sitting on the couch watching TV, then I haven't filled up my schedule enough. So do you look at it like the, you know, the Kelsey brothers certainly have made a brand out of their podcasts, and there are a lot of other current athletes who are kind of creating brands. I mean, do you view that in, in that sense as well? That you know, you can increase not only ex you can increase your exposure both as a driver and a car owner. Yeah, I, I do, and I mean certainly it, it's 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 a brand builder for sure. There's no question about that. Um, you know the the early popularity of it, and how quick it got an audience was you know, really good. Those things really take a, a long time to build. Um, but man, it's you know I I look at Dale Jr. a lot, and you know when you look at him doing interviews as a race car driver when he was the first five ten years in the sport and how he is now on TV and how well he broadcasts and everything. You know, a lot of that came from getting comfortable on air when he's not in front of a TV. And I think that, you know, if I choose to take that route when I'm done racing, then it would make for an easier transition. Danny, how do you feel about the um, short track package one on one in a couple weeks? You feel like, I mean, obviously, everybody hopes it will be better racing. Do you think it will be? Well, we hope so. I mean, we certainly hope so. Um, but honestly, it's going to matter a tire fall off and shifting, how much we do those things as to you know, how, how good the racing is. But certainly from an aerodynamic standpoint, it should be a little bit better. Weather? <laughs> Weather too? Oh, fuck that. You're kind of starting this Virginia swing. Does it surprise you you're still kind of only, you're really the, you're the only cup driver from Virginia and there aren't that many, like if you look at Xfinity Series, I think this weekend it's only Jeb Burton and Ryan Ellis. Yeah, it's, it's a sports change for sure, but I mean, it's you got so many different people from diverse backgrounds and stuff like that, that it's, it's you know, this is what we're doing as a sport, right? We're growing our fan base, we're growing our, everyone, you know, drivers, everyone is just getting more and more diverse, and so, um, you know, hopefully that continues to build our sport. Do you, I mean, of all the drivers from Virginia, there could be an argument made that you're, you're the best ever, you know, you have... Uh, Weatherly and Curtis Turner, but would you consider yourself right up there? Have you ever thought about possibly being thought of as the best driver ever from Virginia? Not, you know, I, I really haven't. I mean, there's some really heavy duty names on, on that list. I mean, it's there's been a lot of drivers from Virginia come through this sport for sure, but I'm still trying to just build up the stack column to make sure that, you know, when I'm done, I'm at least part of the argument. You were talking about that diverse talent earlier. Um, just talk about the the opportunity to be racing against an F1 champion, an IMSA yeah. champion. Um, I mean, we've got the IMSA <laughs> guy in 10th in practice. So. I can tell you, when, when I landed this morning and I saw rain, I'm like, oh man, those guys are going to smoke us because uh, of all the experience that they've got in the rain. But um, it's an honor. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to be racing around those guys at some point. Um, but it's just their their experience is something to be admired, and I'm glad they're they're part of the race this weekend. It kind of reminds me of like the late '90s, early 2000s, where we saw the road course ringers uh, coming in pretty frequently. Do yeah, you, do you hope I mean, there's more of this. Yeah, but you're, you're not going to see the success that even the ringers back in the day. I mean, eventually the the series just got so good, and especially with data sharing nowadays. I mean. It's unbelievable how fast some of these guys are that didn't grow up doing this type of type of racing. So um, you give them enough time in their cars, the IMSA cars, or wherever they 
they be successful as well. So there's just, you know, I think we take for granted for sometimes that, you know, the drivers that are here are pretty darn good.